G'day, everybody. I wanted to respond to a question someone asked me in the comments a little while ago. And it's a perfect example of why sometimes I take my time replying because I don't want to guess and I don't want to sound confident when I'm not. And I definitely don't want to accidentally send somebody down an expensive rabbit hole based on hype. So the comment was, what can you say about the effectiveness of STC30 stem cell treatment? Now, when I first saw that, my honest reaction was, I don't even know what STC30 is. So here's what I can say up front in plain English. I can't confidently rate STC30 specifically as effective or not because that name doesn't show up clearly as a standard widely recognized stem cell protocol in the main research papers I looked at. But I can tell you what the broader research says about stem cell therapy for stroke recovery overall. And I can also give you a simple way to judge any clinic branded program, including something called STC30 without needing a science background. Now, before I go into the concept, implication and application, I want to show you exactly how I found the research quickly, because this is the part that's changed everything for me. All right, quick pause. I'm going to share my screen and show you how I did the search, because this is the reason I can respond to questions like this now in minutes instead of hours. So this is the turn2.ai homepage, and you might have seen my interview with Jessica Dove London, who's building it. What it does is simple. It helps me find the latest research and reliable sources about stroke recovery topics in minutes, not hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the exact thing I searched. So here we go. Tell me about STC 30 stem cells. with regards to stroke recovery and I press generate and then it goes through a process of searching for uh, the particular documents that it is going to bring to my attention that are related to stem cells and stroke recovery. So here we go. Um, it's asking me if I've already tried or researched STC 30 stem cells for stroke recovery before. And it's asking me what kind of evidence I would like. And do I have any specific goals or concerns related to stroke recovery? So I'm going to add here that I am looking for evidence based research. And just to be quick, I'll just do a copy and paste here. And then do you have any specific goals or concerns? Yep, I do. And I specifically, my goals are to improve brain recovery. Well, I made an error. I'm going to say yes anyway. You don't even have to worry about that. And then I'm going to press that there. So now it's going to take those next parts of my conversation into consideration and I'm going to click let's go and now it starts the search and it goes through all of these clinical trials and papers and you can see the progress on this side and now it's searching for online events that may have happened podcasts that may have occurred where people discussed it uh, expert videos where people perhaps on the YouTube channel are talking about it and then it looks internally into uh, turn to uh, AI app where there's a community, I imagine, where people uh, discuss those things. And here we go. Here are the answers to my questions and all the things that it found on STC30 stem cells. So let's just quickly do a check out this uh, FYI for me, STC30 stem cell treatment is an area of interest for you, particularly as it's potential to improve brain injury after stroke. Okay, it's just giving me a bit of a rundown on the search that I requested. Um, it's come up with some information here, and it's giving me a rundown of the mechanisms in action, the evidence on the research, uh, benefits, challenges and risks, future directions. So like, it gives me a whole bunch of information 
about stem cells so that I can have a quick overview of uh, perhaps what other people have experienced so far. Here is some uh, actual summaries of what patients say about stem cells. This is a, a Reddit post where somebody has asked or there's been a discussion about it. And here is another one. I was put into a clinical trial here in the States right after my thrombectomy where they went back in to inject stem cells. Here you go. Let's see what it says here. I don't even know if I got the real juice or not. Okay, so it was just somebody talking about on Reddit, talking about their experience in a trial about stem cells, doesn't really know more about that. If I view that, if I click view source, it's going to take me directly to that discussion on Reddit. And this is the game changer for me because immediately I go to the source of where that conversation happened and I can follow it up if I want to. Um, if I press show more, there'll be even more information here, another patient view and so on. So what the research says, this is the best part about it. Uh, research papers right at your fingertips or one click and they're all here, one, two, three, four, five. And if I do that and go view source, it takes me directly to the PubMed article where I can go through and read that. And this is what I used uh, to develop the rest of the e this video that you're going to see in a moment after I've showed you where I got the information from. And there you are. So I'm going to use what the researchers say and what these articles say about stem cells, and I'm going to complete the rest of the video. Uh, so stay tuned for that as I begin the next part of this video for you. All right, now to the actual question. First, what is STC30 exactly? Well, here's the important part. STC30 does not show up as a well-known standard name for a specific stem cell treatment in the main scientific papers that I looked at. So I can't sit here and say, yes, STC30 works or no, it doesn't because I can't clearly match that label to a specific treatment that's been properly tested and published under that exact name. What I can do though, uh, and what I think is most helpful is explain what stem cell therapy is trying to do after stroke, what the researchers say about stem cells for stroke recovery overall, and how I'd personally think about a clinic branded program like STC30. That way, even if the name is confusing, you still know how to judge it. So what are stem cells supposed to do after stroke? Well, when people hear stem cells, they often imagine something like a full brain rebuild, like they'll replace the damaged brain cells and I'll be back to normal. But in reality, most of the current thinking is more like this. Stem cells may work more like helpers, than replacements. They may release signals that calm down inflammation, support the brain's repair environment, encourage new connections, support blood flow, and the healing process. So rather than magic new brain, it's more like, can this create better conditions for recovery? And that's why stem cells are still a big area of research, because the idea is extremely promising. But promising doesn't automatically mean proven. So when you look at the research as a whole, here's the honest summary. Some studies suggest stem cell treatment might help some people improve areas like movement, function, or daily activities, especially when used in certain time windows and with certain methods. There are also papers that describe stem cells as safe and effective, but that comes with important fine print. A very cautious, let's not get ahead of ourselves type of review looked at multiple clinical trials and basically found some improvement showed up on certain measurement scales, but the evidence wasn't strong enough to confidently say if it improves real world independence for everyone. And many of the trials were small, not all were high quality. So there are signs of benefit, but we're not at the point where it's a guaranteed standard treatment. The biggest problem across the research is that the studies don't all use the same approach. They vary in things like what kind of stem cells are used, how they're prepared, when they're given, early versus later, 
how they're delivered through a drip, through an artery or other methods, what outcomes they measure and how long they follow people up for. So when someone says stem cells work, the real question is which stem cells, given when, given how, and for who. And another thing some major reviews point out, long-term safety data beyond a couple of years is still limited in many areas. So even if short-term safety looks okay in some trials, the long-term picture still needs more tracking. This is the part where I want to be really clear and really fair. I'm not your doctor. I I am not giving medical advice, but I can absolutely give you a practical way to think about it. Here's my simple three-question filter. Is this a proven treatment or an experimental one? If a clinic or a provider can't clearly explain what the treatment actually is in plain terms, what cells, where they came from, how they're prepared, what the protocol is, then you should treat it as experimental. Not automatically bad, just not proven. What evidence can they show you that is public and checkable? Now, I'm talking about things like published studies, uh, registered clinical trials, clear reporting on outcomes and side effects, and follow-up data. If all you're getting is testimonials and before and after stories, that might be hopeful, but it's not enough to make a serious decision. Now, what's the cost? Not just money, but focus as well. This is a huge one for stroke recovery. Sometimes people chase a big intervention and accidentally reduce the things that are already proven to help, like consistent rehab practice, repetition and movement, training, sleep, emotional support, community, nutrition, and general health basics. So if someone is considering stem cells, my personal view is this. Don't let it replace the fundamentals. Treat it as an add-on decision, not the main plan. And what I would say specifically about STC30, to the person who asked that comment, I couldn't confirm STC30 as a clearly defined, widely published stem cell protocol under that exact name in the research I reviewed. So I can't rate STC30 itself as effective or not. But I can say that stem cell therapy for stroke recovery is an active research area with some encouraging results and also real uncertainty because different studies use different methods and long-term data is still limited. So if you're considering it, don't decide based on the name, decide based on the details. If you're watching this and you're seriously considering stem cell therapy, here are some simple questions you can ask your provider. What exactly are the cells? Where do they come from? How are they prepared and checked for quality? How is it given, drip, injection, or other? Who is it best suited for and who should not do it? What are the known risks and side effects? What follow-up do you provide and for how long? Are you part of a registered clinical trial or is this private? And can I see published data or trial registration details? If they can answer those clearly and calmly, that's a good sign. If they dodge, rush, or oversell, I would say pause. And just to close the loop, I pulled this together quickly using turn2.ai. Instead of me spending half a day digging around online, it helped me get to the research and sources fast, and then I checked what mattered. If you want to try it, my affiliate link is in the description. You'll get 10% off. It's about $2 a week, and it supports the podcast. And if you're the kind of person who likes staying up to date, it can keep searching your topics and send you the newest updates once a week. And finally, if the person who asked the STC30 question is watching, if you can share where you heard about STC30, like the clinic name, website, or what they say it stands for, I can do a part two and respond even more directly to the specific claims. Thanks for watching and thanks for asking questions that push us to be curious without getting fooled by hype. Importantly, we present many podcasts designed to give you an insight and understanding into the experiences of other individuals. Opinions and treatment protocols discussed during any podcast are the individual's own experience, and we do not necessarily share the same opinion, nor do we recommend any treatment protocol discussed. All content on this website and any linked blog, podcast, or video material controlled this website or content is created and produced for informational purposes only and is largely based on the personal experience of Bill Gassiamis. 
content is intended to complement your medical treatment and support healing. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied on as health advice. The information is general and may not be suitable for your personal injuries, circumstances, or health objectives. Do not use our content as a standalone resource to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease for therapeutic purposes or as a substitute for the advice of a health professional. Never delay seeking advice or disregard the advice of a medical professional, your doctor, or your rehabilitation program based on our content. If you have any questions or concerns about your health or medical condition, please seek guidance from a doctor or other medical professional. If you are experiencing a health emergency or think you might be, call triple zero if in Australia or your local emergency number immediately for emergency assistance or go to the nearest hospital emergency department. Medical information changes constantly. While we aim to provide current quality information in our content, we do not provide any guarantees and assume no legal liability or responsibility for the accuracy, currency, or completeness of the content. If you choose to rely on any information within our content, you do so solely at your own risk. We are careful with links we provide. However, third-party links from our website are followed at your own risk, and we are not responsible for any information you find there.